Hey guys, and this is it, the last section of notes. So we're looking at 10.3 here. We're looking at vectored value functions, and we're gonna take a look at limit and continuity when we're working with vectored value functions. It's really not bad at all. All right, so what's a vector? I know some of you probably didn't get to this in math analysis or whatever pre-calculus class you took in previous years. It's not that difficult of a concept. It's very similar to a parametric equation, but a vector is a quantity with both magnitude which means a length, basically. And we can find it using the Pythagorean theorem. And direction. All right, we have a couple different vector notations. So we can use these kind of pointed brackets with an X and Y in between like this. Or we can use I and J notation where like the things in front of it are the, the X and the Y. So for instance, if we had this 2, 1 in vector notation, um, we would go two in the x direction, one in the y direction. So we go over two, up one, and there's where the point would be. But it, since it's a vector, it's got a length and a direction. So it's actually a line going from the origin to that point that has a particular length, and this is our direction that it's going towards two, one. All right, so that's how vectors work. They're just going from the origin to a point, and it's just a line with that direction. All right, for, and we would really just graph it as just the dot, the point. For 3i minus 2j, well, that would be 3, negative 2 as a vector. So the, the x is with the i and the y is with the j. So we'd be going over 3 and then down 2. All right, so we'd be going down to that point. So from the origin down to that point. So this one is a little bit longer and it has a different direction. So it's going down. Like we can add vectors, we can subtract vectors, we can multiply vectors, we can do all divide, we can do all sorts of fun things with vectors. But in this class, all we need to do is know what a vector looks like and then be able to do calculus with it. All right, so we're chiefly, so these are constant vectors. So these aren't changing. They're just, they're numbers in for X and Y. All right, what we're going to look at is what's called a vectored value function. All right, so we have functions in here for the values in the vector. So we often use bold letters to stand for vectors. Other times we'll put little arrows on top. Like that also means vector. All right, so if you see that notation, that's what we're talking about. So I'm writing it in the bracket form of a vector. So we have R of T is a vector where T is our variable is equal to some function of X and some function of Y. So it's going to change. It's going to move around instead of just be this one point. All right, it's graphed just like parametric equations are graphed. So we could graph this just like we graph parametric equations. We could put this in for our x. We can put this function in for our y and so on. And make sure we check the domain of each part before we try and do anything with it. So for instance, here's a vector valued function r of t, where x of t is 1 over t, and y of t is the natural log of t minus 1. So if we look at the domain here for what t values we can plug in, well, first from the x of t, we get that t cannot be 0, because we can't have 0 on the bottom. From the y of t, we get, so we have the ln of t minus 1. All right, so that means we can't have ln of negative numbers, so that means t minus 1 must be greater than 0. So t has got to be greater than 1. So when we look at these two things together, we say, okay, well, here, t can be anything but zero, but this guy's telling us it's got to be greater than one, all right? So we go with basically the intersection of the two or the more restrictive of the two. In this case, t minus or t greater than one is the domain for this vector value function up here. All right, so limits, they work exactly how you might think they would. So like if we want the limit of, the vectored r of t, where r of t is x of t, y of t, we just take the limit in each part separately and we leave our answer as a vector inside these the brackets or with the ij notation. So when we look for limits, our answers will be vectors. All right, so if our function f of t is e to the negative 3t over, and the y of t part is sine of t over 2t, and we want the limit as t goes to 0 in f, we just do the limit in each part. So we do the limit as t goes to 0 of e to the negative 3t, which is going to be e to the 0, which is just 1. For the other guy, we take the limit as t goes to 0 of sine of t over 2t. Well, we know that's going to be indeterminate. t goes to 0 and sine of t is just 0. The limit as t 
goes to zero in 2t is also just zero. So we have two ways we can do this. We can use L'Hopital's rule, or we can use the indeterminate formula for sine of t over t. Either way, if we just take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom and do L'Hopital's rule, which is what I think most of you guys like to do, we'd say this is cosine of t over 2. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we get 1 half. Now, don't leave your answer like this. Write it as a vector. So your answer for this would be the vector 1, 1 half, like that. All right? So make sure we put it together, put them both back into a vector in your final answer here. All right, for the other one here, so we've got a vectored valued function r of t. We're still working, I guess, with the same r of t over here. And we want to know about continuity. So it, what's continuous? Well, the definition of continuous with vectors is exactly the same as the definition of continuous when we're working regular functions. So we need these three conditions to apply if we want it to be continuous at A. All right, first is R at A has to be defined. So we got to be able to plug in A into R and get some sort of number. Second is the limit needs to exist. And the third is that these two things are equal to each other. So the limit has to be equal to the function value there. All right, that's exactly what it was before. So this is good review, guys. We're going back over what's continuity. What's the rules for continuity? There's our three rules that give us if something is continuous. So we'll take a look. Is g of t, which is equal to this guy here, 1 over t minus 1i plus cosine of tj, is it continuous at t equals 1? So our first thing is g of 1 defined. Well... G of 1 would be 1 over 1 minus 1i plus cosine of 1j. So cosine, we don't have any problems with. That's fine. This is a problem. It's 1 over 0. All right, so that's undefined. All right, so it's undefined. So is it defined? No, it's not defined, so that means it's not continuous. We don't have to look at the other ones. We know the first thing fails, so it's not continuous. All right, if we tried another value, like, say, pi, then it would be continuous because we can plug in pi here, we can plug in pi here, we get a, a g value. The limit would exist at pi because there's no problem there, and the limit would equal the function value. So at pi, it would be continuous, but at 1, it's definitely not continuous. All right, so that's your just first introduction here to vectored valued functions. we got a lot more to do coming back. So check out the next one where we start adding in some calculus stuff.